Hey, what's up everybody? Eric with Solabox. Today I'm out in the shop uh, spooning some tires. And so I had a customer get a hold of me a few weeks ago online and he said, hey, uh, I got these brand new tires. I only took one ride on them. Do you want them? And I'm like, yeah, what are they? He said, uh, you know, they're 606s, Dunlops, and it just wasn't the tire for me. You can have them if you want them. And not only did he give them to me, but he actually drove all the way up the I-5 corridor from where he lives out here to Cedro Woolley and uh, hand delivered them, which I thought was just too cool. And so I thought, you know, what could I do to kind of return the favor? And maybe I can't do anything for him, but I could do something for somebody else by maybe making a video on uh, how to spoon these. Because I know a lot of guys, they don't know how to do it and maybe they're put off by the idea of trying it out for themselves. And so I thought, you know, I'll give some tips and uh, kind of show how it's done. Maybe I can make that part easier on somebody else, maybe save them a few bucks. Um, you know, for me, a lot of why I spoon them myself is because I don't want to wait on a shop to do it for me. You know, when I order my, my tires online and get them shipped to my house, I want to put them on. And so, Knowing how to do this, you know, it can save you a few bucks. It can get them on there. Now, I'm not going to show you how to balance them. Now, you can kind of halfway balance them basically yourself if you want to. Personally, for me, this is a KLR 650. I don't worry about it. You know, there's other people out there with other bikes that might be kind of worried about maybe scratching up the sidewall on uh, their rim or whatever. That's not me either. <laughs> you know what? I'm about getting some tires on there and going riding. So, anyway... Uh, you know, maybe this doesn't fit for everybody, but uh, maybe it fits for somebody else. So, um, actually, I think uh, I will, uh, I'll show you a couple of things while I've got you here real quick. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, let's see, uh, well, I guess the first thing I'm going to show you here is how I jacked the bike up to do the front tire. You can see the front tire is done already, and that's actually going to be tip number one. If you've never done this before, or even if you have done it before, and it's been a while since you've spooned tires, spoon the first one first. It's a lot easier to do than the back one, and so you can kind of get your technique down. So do the front one first. I guess uh, the next thing I can show you is how I jacked this up. Um, I have the wheel just enough off the ground that I was able to remove it. Um, it's pretty safe to do it this way, but uh, you know, you don't want the dog out in the shop. You don't want your toddler running around. Basically, uh, it's a tripod. I've got the jack right here, so it's resting on that. It's resting on the side stand and on the back tire. When I go to remove the back tire, I'll actually show you a different technique for getting it up off the ground. I could again use the jack maybe on the swing arm towards the rear, but I've got another thing that I do, which is actually really handy for uh, lubing the chain and stuff, something that uh, some people may not be aware of. So uh, anyway, the front one went on there pretty easy. Uh, I've heard that 606s, I've never spooned them myself, but I've heard that the uh, sidewall can be kind of stout. And so we will see how difficult it is to do. So over here we've got tip number two, which involves BTUs. It's the dead of winter here in Washington State. It is cold out. This uh, 606 was sitting out in the shop all night where it was cold. Actually, I brought it in the house for a while and uh, I've got some drapes in the living room that go all the way down to the floor and I've got a heat register there and I was able to put this tire by the heat register and then just kind of wrap it with the curtains and get some warmth, in, warmth into them. And what I've got going on now is just the shop heater uh, with all those BTUs going up into that tire. Uh, warm rubber is gonna spoon a lot better than cold rubber, especially on a tire that I have heard is difficult to do. So I'm getting it nice and warm and uh, wish me luck. I hope this goes well. Um, another thing you're gonna want, let's go over this stuff too, is uh, lube. Um, <laughs> This is uh, nothing but uh, soap and water and a squirt bottle. If you don't have a squirt bottle when you go to do this, um, you know what? Just dump out the, uh, the Windex from a bottle and fill it back up. Go heavy on the uh, soap and a little bit of water. Really you want that as slick as possible. It really makes it a lot easier to do this. And so do that. Uh, if your wife catches you doing this, you don't know me. Here we've got... Uh, these are actually the spoons that I bought for the very first tire I did. I did my first tire way back in 1997, and it was before YouTube, and I didn't have uh, the luxury of having somebody show me. I just basically had to try to, f 
to, to figure it out. I had a, an 86 CR125 and I put new tires on it. And boy, I was about pulling my hair out trying to figure out how in the heck you do that with a pair of these. So you'll need a set of these. Here's a tire pressure gauge. This one's actually made for motorcycles and stuff because you can see it's a low pressure gauge. It doesn't go very high up. And so the accuracy of this one, anyone will work, but uh, you're gonna wanna know how much air you're putting in your tires. Um, here's something that's really important to have. This will pull the stem out of the tube. And so you'll want one of these. You can actually also get uh, the stem caps that have this little tool built into it. Basically, you stick it down inside of the stem and you take the little valve out of there. It's really important. You're gonna wanna have one of these, so. Uh, the only other tools you'll need is basically the stuff to uh, take the tires themselves off I'm gonna assume you guys have that stuff already figured out if you don't know how to remove the rims from your bike This might be biting off a little more than uh, you can choose so uh, Hopefully you've got that part figured out. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the bike down off of the jack and roll it forward a little bit away from the door and uh, get on with uh, trying to take the rear tire off. So, or actually the rear rim off and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I forgot to mention in the last clip that uh, when I jacked up the front end of the bike, um, one thing that I did as an added precaution was I put the bike in gear so the rear, the rear wheel wouldn't be able to turn. It's just a, a little bit of extra precaution against it being able to roll off. Um, because I'm not sure if I was clear enough about this, but when, when you got the front tire off of this and it's just sitting on a jack, you really don't want to hit the bike. I mean, it could really be a mess. So anyway, for doing the back tire, um, I'm going to show you really quick how I get it up off of the ground. And also this can be really handy for doing chain maintenance and stuff just because it's so simple. So basically all I've got here is just your average everyday framing hammer. Anything that's about the right length. Actually this could be really handy if you're out on the trail having to replace a tire um, or, or to, to patch a tube or whatever. Um, you can usually find a stick or something that you could use to do this. So anyway what I do is I grab the front brake. And to get myself sort of into position on the KLR there's actually a nice little saddle area right here that this handle will go right into but uh, you could probably find on any bike a good spot a good uh, place to put this or something that maybe you need to be a little longer or a little shorter but either way you'll get the idea here in a second so I grab the front brake push the bike up put the hammer where I want it and set it down you see that uh, I'm now just, I can just barely get my fingers underneath of that. And so that's about right. You don't want it way up in the air. Um, there's really no sense in it. So anyway, I'm going to get on with uh, taking this castle nut off and uh, pulling the rim off. And then uh, I'll get back to you. All right. So, uh, as you can see here, I needed a little more clearance to get the tire out from underneath. I ended up having to put this up onto another little three-quarter inch riser here, just a little piece of square stock. I also put the uh, jack into place just as an added measure of protection. Uh, once again, you know, I would not want to see this fall over in my shop. Getting it back up would really be a nightmare. So never had that happen to me, and I'd like to keep it that way. So. Anyway, the rear wheel is now off. Um, having a spot to, uh, to do the work is nice too. I've got these rubber mats, which are really nice for changing tires. You can also uh, maybe lay down a big piece of cardboard or something to work on, keep uh, things from getting scratched up or whatever. So anyway, I'm set up here to go ahead and pull the valve out, let all the air out. Hopefully I'm not going to have a hard time with getting the uh, the bead broken on this. You know, I went years and years of changing tires and never once had a problem getting a bead to break. And now it seems like for the last several years, every tire I've tried to do, the bead has been a pain in the ass. I've actually had to, uh, to take and lay a rim completely on its side in the dirt and drive my Subaru up onto the edge here to try to break the bead on a tire one time. And uh, it was just stubborn, didn't want to go. So we'll see how we do here. I'm thinking that uh, I'm going to try something that I've never done before by 
maybe lubing this up a bit with some of the uh, the soapy water and uh, see if that doesn't help to get uh, the tire to fall down into the well. I'll show you after I get this tire off of here, um, there's a well in the center of this rim and it's important to understand how that well works. So here's what this looks like. This is the little valve stem that's uh, inside the tube. So I've just used the little tool and pulled it out. So there's no air in this now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, See if maybe this doesn't help me to break this bead by lubing it up a little bit. This tire's cold too, I didn't bother warming it up. Taking them off isn't nearly as hard as putting them back on usually, except for the part of trying to get the bead broken. Um, sometimes you can use the kickstand on your bike. You can lay this rim flat on the ground and get the kickstand down on here and uh, kind of leverage this down. The main thing is you just Oh, I think I might have just broke it with my fingers, actually. I think I did. Well, that was easy. Generally what I do when one is pretty easy to do is I'm just gonna lay this flat on the ground and I'm gonna step on it. But uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, sometimes you can use the kickstand to do it, but it's really difficult to try to figure out how to do when the back end of your bike is up in the air uh, with no rim on there. Um, being held up by a hammer so uh, that kind of rules out the uh, side stand for me on this one but uh, I'm gonna move the camera really quick I'm gonna step on this and we'll see if we can't break the beat so if this does break really easy which it's kind of looking like maybe it's gonna then I won't really know whether the, the soap had any effect on this or not. So I'm not sure if this is all the way broken or not. Sometimes you can use the tire iron itself to try to get down in there and break it. Yeah, I don't think it's breaking so easy. Definitely not breaking the bead. I don't know why it was that for like literally for years I never had any issue with uh, breaking the bead on a tire and now it just seems like every single one of them for the last several years has given me nothing but grief. So I'm uh, trying to pry this down and maybe I can get some lube in there. If you can get it to slide down just slightly it'll break the bead and make my life so much easier. They make special tools now, I guess, that uh, can help you to break the bead. I've yet to buy one, but I think it might be on my list. So that's just not happening. Um, maybe what I'll do is um, open up the jaws on my vise and see if I can't uh, get this tire into the vise and squeeze it and, uh, and break it that way, so. I'll uh, turn this off and uh, move the camera. All right, so I've never used a vise to do this before, but uh, getting this set up was easy enough. That only took a second, so let's see how this works out. Let's see if this won't squeeze it off of there. And I think it still hasn't actually sprung, but uh, I was just watching it move up in here. It was just slowly creeping its way along. So sometimes when it uh, when it does pop, you'll actually hear it. And I haven't heard anything yet, so I think I'll try uh, leveraging it a little bit with one of the tire irons. I'm not sure if it's going to make a noise or not, but. If this doesn't work, I'll always think it should have. <clears throat> Man, 
what a pain. There it went. That last little bit right there. Once it does go, you definitely know. Sometimes it just takes a little per persuasion. You know, it's, uh, I've never had to change a tire out on the trail. Um, I just, I don't know what you would do in this situation. Um, I guess uh, the mother inven of invention would have to step in. Um, I did, however, one time, I was out on my DRZ 400, and I was actually about, I think it turned out to be like 48 miles from home, and I got a rear flat, and uh, I had to ride it, basically, at highway speeds all the way back to the house in Mount Vernon. I actually went from Arlington, Washington, back to Mount Vernon, on a rear flat, most of which was done at highway speeds. And if you've ever ridden with a rear flat, you get a little bit of this floaty action going on. Um, what tire was I running? Uh, that was a, uh, a T63. It got me home. I didn't have the tools with me to fix it. Um, and I was grateful to be there. So anyway, the bead is broken. Let's move back over this way. This side's still kind of being a pain. It's still sort of stuck, the rubber ends up sort of stuck to the uh, to the metal. Who knows how long these have been on here. Um, I did not buy this tire. Uh, I bought this KLR used, and this just happened to be what was on it. And uh, what are they? They're Pirelli MT90s, and uh, these lean just a little bit more towards street than what I would like. Um, T63s, I guess they've been discontinued, but for years and years, man, that was my favorite go-to tire for the KLR. Actually, for other bikes, too, because it's just such a great 50-50 tire. It did street really well and dirt really well both. And, uh, shit, I might actually have to take this back up there and break the bead on the other side, too, because it is absolutely still stuck on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off, finish breaking the bead, and then I'll show you guys how to uh, peel this tire off. All right, so uh, here I am working on the second side, still trying to break the bead, and man, it's just being a pain in the ass. So I thought I'd show you really quick uh, a little thing that uh, my dad taught me when I was younger uh, how to gain some extra leverage. Um, this is an old mechanics trick, but uh, box wrench slipped over the end. This thing still does not want to break free. Why the bead has to be such a pain in the ass. But uh, that little trick with the leverage has helped me out on all kinds of things, not just changing tires, but you know, breaking stuff free or whatever. Actually, I used that technique earlier on a on an Allen wrench, putting the uh, the front tire back on. Uh, stubby little stubby little uh, Allen wrenches get a little extra leverage on them with this the length of this and uh, man, having this pop off of here that could get real painful really quick. What a pain in the ass. Maybe I just need to squeeze it down a little bit further. Yeah, of course, I'm going to try to show you guys how this is done, and it's going to fight me tooth and nail every bit. It's actually been a while since... Actually, it hasn't been too long since I've done tires. I just put uh, front and back tires on my KDX 200 this past summer. But before that, it had actually been quite a while since I had, had to do a tire. I'm glad that I had the vice available to me to try to do this. Trying to drive a car up onto the sidewall is just a real pain in the ass too, so. 
Still doesn't really look like this is completely broken. Let's try moving into another spot. Once you can get the tire to fall down into that center well that I'm going to show you, you see what it is. It's just basically how the, the rim itself is shaped. It's, it's dished on the inside and you need the tire to be sitting inside of that well where it's dished in order to do the work. Maybe I should put a little more uh, soap up in there. I can see where the, uh, the sidewall is binding on the rim where it's not sliding down off of there. The soapy water can really help a lot with doing these tires. Like I said, I've never really used it to break the bead. There we go, it's coming off now. But I uh, actually kind of had a little bit of an epiphany recently just thinking about it. I was like, you know, maybe that would make it a lot easier. There she goes. Now the bead is broken. Let's get this off of here. Go throw it down on the ground. And uh, I'll show you really quick how to remove the tire. Glad right, that's over. Here we are. Uh, so, the stem is out. I've got, uh, my cush drive is, is pulled out. I don't need that in my way. I've got a uh, bearing cap. I got that out of the way. The bead is broken. Here's where the stem is at. And so where I'm gonna start is actually 180 out from where the stem is. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I'm gonna take this nut off of uh, the stem too. Let me grab a pair of pliers. Another little tip here is that this little nut here, um, you don't want to tighten it down all the way when you're done. It's not actually meant to be tight. If the tire ever slips, if the torque of the engine ever causes the tire to slip on the rim, you'll tear the stem out. You'll want to leave a little bit of a gap here. I'm kind of surprised. I don't see, I guess there's no rim lock on a KLR. It's been a long time since I've done a KLR uh, rim. My KDX actually has um, the tire there's a, a mechanism inside of it that actually keeps the tire locked on. And uh, doing tires with those is definitely a little more complex. Not much, but a little bit more complex than doing one without having that rim lock on there. It's just an extra thing to have to try to deal with as you're doing the work. So what I've got here now is the bead is broken and I'm basically just trying to Push the tire down into the center of the rim where that well is that I've been telling you about. Because it makes it considerably easier to get this off of here. So, now we get to the fun part. Now, <clears throat> knowing how to leverage this, how much of a bite you can take, is really a lot of what it takes to get this done. And that's a lot of the learning curve is knowing, you know, how much, how much can I get away with? And so I'll show you what I mean by that, I guess. So, as you can see, I took a little bite there. I just stuck it in there. Um, when this goes in, it goes in in this direction with the curve going like so. Took a little bite, I'm 180 out from the valve stem so that I'm not gonna damage it. Now I'll stick the, uh, the second spoon in there, get a hold of it, 
give myself a little extra leverage. You don't want to go overboard on using the, the extra leverage either. You know, if, if it's obvious that something doesn't want to go, trying to bend or break something is not a good idea. Um, I'm just basically doing it because it makes it just a little easier to do. So I took my second bite. One thing that's uh, an extra handy little thing to know is that you can use the brake rotor actually to hold these. Now I'm going to pull the first one back out. Take another little bite. And actually you can see how the rubber, like you wouldn't be able to get this in right here because the rubber is actually contacting the rim. It starts to separate away from it as it heads towards the center of the rim down into that well. And so you sort of start to get a feel for how, how to get this under there and grab a hold. One thing that's really important, I've never really pinched tubes removing a tire, but uh, you'll, you'll see when I go to put the new tire back on that it's really important to be careful with the tire irons themselves that you're not getting the iron onto the tube and pinching it because there's really nothing worse than spending all the time of putting a fresh tire on and then you go to pump it up <laughs> and you hear this noise. Once you've had that happen to you, <laughs> you learn real quick that you don't want, ever want it to happen again because it takes a little bit of effort to do this, you know? But like I said at the beginning, you know, it's all, it's all just technique. Once you know the technique of doing these, it's really not that hard to do. Now I don't even need the first one. There's the stem right there. I've made it halfway around. of it's done now I'm going to turn and come over to the second side and basically do exactly the same thing now I can see the tube down in there and actually I just had this uh, this one was actually on the tube luckily I was being kind of careful I don't think I pinched it but now I don't have the uh, the disc rotor to hold it so I'm going to just use my fingers Notice I'm not e needing any extra leverage. It's coming around pretty easy. Once you get to a certain point, you don't need that second tire iron. You don't need it to hold things in place for you. So kind of set it aside and finish up what needs to be done. So I've come all the way around. There's my, I don't know if you guys are in frame. Let me move this. All right. So now I've got the rim sitting all the way down inside of the tire here. Um, where's my stem? Actually, I'm gonna drop it down away from the stem, right here. You want to be careful. You don't want to have to replace the tube if you don't have to. There we go. Now I've got it all the way down at the bottom on one side. I've got the tube out.
going to take a few bites off of this tire iron. Once you get it to a certain point, it becomes pretty easy to get it to come out of there. Of course, that point is not forthcoming. Probably because I've got an audience. So I'm just doing this from the back. Hopefully the struggle has become completely self-evident. All right, there we go. Much ado. There it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, prepare myself to uh, to get the new tire stuck on there. All right, so I got some more BTUs put into the tire. It's nice and warm. I warmed up my coffee. I made myself some more uh, some more bubbles. It's getting low. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the valve stem back into the tube. Hopefully you guys are somewhat in frame here. Stay down in there. Use the tool, tighten it up. I'm going to put a little air into this tube in a second and the amount you put into it is really kind of important. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. So I'm going to start at the valve stem and just push this into the tire all the way around. Get it just kind of basically into place. Take my air supply and put just a little bit of air in this. You basically want enough air to get the tube to have its proper shape, but you don't want too much because it'll make it so that you can't get the tire on. So it's still, it's almost to the point of being flat. I think that's gonna be about right. Sometimes I'll get started and I'll realize that I gotta let a little bit more out. It actually might be too much. We'll know here in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. All right, so I had to pause for a minute. I ran out of disc space. So I'm gonna lube this up really good, some soapy water. I just spray that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rim too. I'll show you really quick the well that I keep talking about is this here. And so it's really important to be able to get this tire sitting down inside of this well because that's what gives you a lot of the clearance that you need to make things happen. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and locate, where's the hole at for the stem? Here it is. Got my stem here, got my hole here. Turn it around to where it faces me. I've got the nut. That's not the nut, that's a nut to something else. Uh, what did I do with it? I gotta probably put it on the bench. Here it is. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna fish the stem up through the hole. If I can. And put the nut on there just kind of loosely to hold this where I want it. Now this is where it becomes really important to keep an eye on what you're doing because you do not want to pinch the tube in between either the tire irons or the rim and the tire. You want to really 
take it slow and be cautious because if you do that, you'll be doing the entire job over. And so I'm looking here and I can see that here's the tube and here's the rim. I just want to make sure that I keep them absolutely separated. And I want to start. I'm using my knees to kind of push this on there as, as much of it as to what I can to get it started. And I'm watching right here. See, the tube was actually right where I don't want it. It was starting to pinch. So you really got to pay attention. And this is part of having just the right amount of air in there. You want enough that it gives the tube a little bit of shape, but not so much that it becomes somewhat of a hindrance. So now I'm just taking little bites and kind of holding it in place with my knees. Where's my wrench? This is where knowing what you can get away with in terms of how big a bite you take and what you can't get away with is kind of important. My hands have that soap on them so now my hands are slick too. This is where knowing what you can get away with in terms of a bite is important because you can only get so much of the rubber to go on there. One push. You only get so much of it to go. If you try to take off too big of a bite, it's not going to happen. So I'll show you where I'm at now. So I've got it all the way around. From here to here is what is left to do. You see the tube is up inside of there. It's not in any danger of getting pinched. And what I'm gonna do now is I stick the, the spoon under here. And sometimes a hammer is really handy here too. Like if I deem this as being too much of a bite, I'll tap on it and get it over here to where I'm taking less of a bite. Sometimes you can push it by hand. Let's try that, I'll see if I can get that much to go. I'm making sure that the tube's up in there. No danger of uh, pinching it. And now you can see, there's just a little bit of it that's kind of being held up from going all the way down on there. Might actually need to Get the second one in there to kind of help out. And I saw the tube there. Can't really show you that, but the tube actually came down and was almost in danger of getting pinched. You want to be really careful. You see, that's the tube right there. And it's right where you want to be careful, make sure it's out of the way. Absolutely cannot stress out enough. You don't want to do this twice. So I just took a pretty good sized bite of it. Time to stick the, the tire iron in there again. So nice. you can pull up on the tire. You'll have a hard time getting it through because it's it's got force on it. It's pushing it up against the rim. And so pull it back towards me just a little bit. You want to be careful doing that too because you lose some of the ground that you just gained on your last maneuver. There comes a point at which you have to leave the other tire and iron, tire iron in place to keep it from uh, keep you from losing ground. Because if you don't keep it in there, every time you try to bend this over, the tire will just start to slip back up. So I'm going to keep this one in here. I've got my knee on it. I'm going to prepare myself to take another bite.
The 606 so far doesn't seem like it's as difficult to deal with as what I was kind of envisioning. So now I took another bite, that frees up the first one that I was just holding in place with my knee, and now I'm just gonna swap. Being able to see the, uh, the tube at this point is, uh, you really can't. And so I'm using my fingers, I'm feeling up in there to see where it's at. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll be able to take this big of a bite, but we're gonna give it a shot. We're getting close, it's coming around. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get away with that. This is where having the hammer, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab one really quick. It gets harder and harder to get the, uh, the tire iron into the spot you need it to be in. And this is also where the well is important because the more you can keep the tire down inside of the well, it gives you um, more slack to play with basically in trying to get this to go on there. So, oh, I got a hold of the tube there. I did it again too. Hopefully that wasn't uh, my undoing. You really got to make sure that tube stays protected. All right, so I've got the iron back into place, pulling it with my knee. And I'm just going to tap this iron over so that I'm not taking quite as big of a bite. It becomes harder and harder to move it over in the direction you need it to go. So the hammer could be really handy to kind of help you out with that. Take another bite, that one went real nice. Stick my knee into place. I'm looking underneath of there to make sure that the tube's not in any danger. I think I can probably, yeah, there's a good spot right there. Yeah, I've always wondered what the 606s would be like to spoon on. I've heard that they are pretty uh, stout, but that uh, sidewall could be trouble. But this is actually going easier than, uh, than to what I thought it was going to. So, got that going for me. It was actually probably harder to try to take and break the bead from the old tire. So as it's, uh, things are tightening up here, it becomes harder and harder to get this to bend over and to get the next bite taken. This is where you have to know to take smaller bites. And so now you can see that I'm not taking much of a bite at all. That's about all I can get. But uh, the tire's up off of the rim right here and I'm now only working this side of the tire. So now it's just little bites. And that's a lot of it, is knowing what you can get away with and what you can't. Might give it a little more zap with some bubbles because this is the part where it becomes the most difficult is getting that last little bit on there. And once again, that's where the, the well comes in to, uh, to play because the more you can get the tire to sit inside of the well, uh, the more slack you'll have in terms of uh, trying to get that to bend over and um, go on there. I'm trying to take too big of a bite. And it's not much of a bite at all, really. I'm only maybe trying to go like two inches. And it's, uh, it's strong tired and strong. Just lost my first one. There we go. Sure hope I haven't damaged the, uh, the tube.
that's too much. Still too much. It's getting really tight on there. So I'm now, you can see I'm way down at the end. Sometimes you'll get to where, as you take this little bite off of here, it starts wanting to come off over here too. And so sometimes what you need to do is change up your game plan and hold it in place, that last one, and then start working it from this direction and just finalize it by coming towards here. I'd really like for this to be able to be sitting down in the well a little bit better to give me that little bit of slack. You can see that it's all the way on on this side. This side's done. Now it's just, this is the hardest part is getting this final little tiny bit to go on there. And this is where you want it down in the well. And this tire is just so stiff that it's really not wanting to sit down in there. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. So. Of course, if I didn't have a camera rolling right now, I'd probably be done. Because it's so tight on there right now that you could just barely even take any bite at all. Let's see if I can get another small one. This is where your rim gets scratched too, is because you're trying to force this between the tire and the rim. Personally, I don't really care if it gets scratched. I'd rather have a scratched rim than wait for the, the dealership to do this work for me, honestly. And it's just kind of nice to know that you can do it. But, uh, if you get a flat tire somewhere out on the trail or something that you can pop it off and patch it and uh, get yourself underway again. Really having a hard time. I guess this is the part where uh, the 606 <laughs> becomes as hard to deal with as to what you've heard about. I suppose I could stop and try to warm the tire up some more. It's, this process ta has taken a little while, so it's kind of cooled down. It just becomes so tight that it can really be difficult to get a bite taken out of it.
It's getting close now. Sorry this is taking so long. I suppose I'll be editing some of this out to try to shorten it up. Too much. All right, so I'm all done. Both tires are holding air. I did uh, lower the uh, the air pressure, and I took this out and I rode it about 200 yards with uh, real low pressure in both tires, just to try to get both tires sitting on the rims correctly. Uh, filled them back up, set the back at 28, the front at 21, uh, which is what it's called for uh, uh, by the manufacturer. So anyway, I hope this helps somebody. It looks like my battery's blinking at me, so I better let you guys go. Eric with Solo Box, hope this helps somebody. Talk to y'all later.